Now we'll take a look at the Hoffman elimination. Don't confuse it with the Hoffman rearrangement. Uh, but this is probably one of the more important reactions of amines. And uh, if you recall doing reactions, uh, elimination reactions where we formed alkenes and when we formed the less substitute alkenes, some people would call that the anti zaitsev alkene, where some people would say the Hoffman alkene, and it is this reaction where it gets its name. Uh, in this Hoffman elimination, we're definitely doing elimination, we'll form an alkene as a product, we'll see, uh, but we'll be forming the least substituted alkene possible, the Hoffman product, i.e., again, where, this, uh, where the idea that the Hoffman uh, product is the less substitute alkene comes from. Uh, if we look here, we're going to start with an amine here, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to add excess methyl iodide to what we say exhaustively methylate. We're just doing straight up SN2 here. So and we're going to exhaustively methylate. So we'll come and attack, add a methyl group, we'll deprotonate, and we'll keep doing this until we have a quaternary ammonium ion here, like we do in this case. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add silver oxide and water. And the idea is that silver oxide is basic. Uh, and the fact that it's silver means we can precipitate out the silver iodide. And so the iodide ion that we have right here gets precipitated out of silver iodide and it gets replaced with hydroxide, a strong base. And that's the key here because hydroxide being a strong base, we can now do E2 elimination. Uh, the key here though is that if we look, uh, the nitrogen here is gonna function as the leaving group and it's attached to this carbon, we'll call him an alpha carbon. And this carbon we'll call an alpha carbon. And then we've got a beta here and a beta here. And the idea is that we're going to use the least substituted beta carbon to do the reaction. And that's this one over here that's secondary, not this one over here that's tertiary. And so when our hydroxide comes in and acts as a base, we're just going to simply deprotonate one of those hydrons, kick these electrons down to form the pi bond, and kick off the leaving group right there. Cool, so we see we're just going to form a little three carbon alkene right here, and then we'll have the rest of the molecule as an amine uh, as your product. So the alkene is usually what we're trying to synthesize with the Hoffman elimination, uh, but the amine is technically your other product and you have to purify it off or something if it wasn't your desired product and things of that sort. Uh, one of the big things to worry about here is why in the world does this go Hoffman? Well, let's go take another look at this here. So. Usually when we think of a good leaving group, we think of the halides, and they're good leaving groups, so chlorine, bromine, iodine, because they're really, really weak bases. But if we look at our leaving group in this case, that is this lovely amine, and amines, we said, are moderate to strong bases, and so this lovely species that actually acted as a leaving group is not a good leaving group. And when you don't have a good leaving group, elimination tends to go Hoffman, and we're going to kind of explain why here. So if we look at this deprotonation step, so it's all simultaneous, a concerted mechanism, as we say. So we're going to come in and deprotonate. And so we're going to deprotonate that H. These electrons are like, OK, we're going to come and form the pi bond, but you need to get ready to leave and be the leaving group. And the nitrogen says, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not a good leaving group. I'm going to slow down here. Um, because I'm not a leaving group, um, why don't you just kind of do this? Well, again, we're cheating here. This is still a concerted mechanism. It all happens in one step. But the big thing is that because we have a bad leaving group, it slows this step down, and you get a buildup of negative charge on that beta carbon. And so it's very carbanion-like in the transition state. And if you recall, carbanion trend is opposite carbocation trend. So for the most stable carbanion, I actually want the least substituted carbanion. And that's what's driving this to go and form the least substituted alkene, the Hoffman product, again, as we say, um, just because the transition state is carbanion-like. So that's why this goes Hoffman. That's the big deal. Uh, the big thing you remember, need to remember is that the transition state is carbanion-like, uh, hence we're forming the least substituted alkene.